transformed over the years based off of really what the needs of my patient patients have been um, I was telling somebody that years ago I when somebody would come into my office I, I'd adjust them and like literally 99% of them would get would get better like we just didn't even have to do we just adjust them they got better it was like a, really almost a hundred percent and then we started noticing once the smartphones came in and the laptops, it was really started with the cell phone and then there was a laptop and the technology changed, the demands on the spine really changed. So then I had to start in, including some of the rehab you see in here. Um, I had to start including home care. Uh, and so I spent many years playing with that and going, if, if those of you that know me, I travel all over the nation trying to figure out who's doing it the best and what I can learn from them. And that's how a lot of this stuff was born in here. Um, and then about two years ago, I would say, I started noticing that there was, I know, I'll try my best, um, that there was a group of people that just would not get well no matter what you did. And I, I couldn't figure out, because everything I understood about the human body, it was that it repaired. And I didn't understand what was that one thing that was missing. And that's when I went searching for the gut. And I started studying everything I could about the gut. And uh, to date, what you see in the reset factor, what you see in the 15-day uh, detox, what we're experiencing here in the office, is that when you start repairing the nervous system and then you go and you repair the gut, and I'm gonna knock on wood, right now we're seeing 100% success regardless of what you come in with. That those two sim systems are that important to your overall health. So tonight what I wanna do is I'll kinda of walk you, I'm gonna start you up on a, on a top sort of looking from above at health and then I'm gonna really bring it down. I know a lot of you are on the 15 day detox, you wanna lose weight. Um, a lot of people want better energy, which I think is fantastic. I think that's actually the greatest reason to be healthy is so you can have insane energy. Um, and so we're gonna really bring it down into 10 things that I know need to be in order for you to burn fat. Um, and what you have to understand is that this is a science. This is not, this is not hokey pokey. This isn't like, oh, I tried it on one person. This isn't like, you know, I tried it on 20 people. This is, I tried it on myself, tried it on my family, tried it on my friends, tried it on people over, the, over years. I talked to other practitioners, they've tried it. These are, I looked at, I'll show you a lot of the science tonight behind like the gut and what we know about the gut. So if you apply these principles correctly, they will change your life. And a lot, a lot of people in here, a lot of people in here, can you just sit and you chat with them and they'll tell you it, 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 it's, no, it's like a path that you just take one step and then you take the next step and then you take the next step and eventually you get where you want to be. So um, before I go into the how and the big vision, I want to kind of walk through where what my what my path of health has been because um, I hear people say sometimes like well yeah of course it's easy for you to lose weight um, but what you do or of course you have like whenever I tell somebody oh yeah I, I did X Y and Z and my energy went through the roof everybody laughs and goes well isn't your energy all the way through the roof um, and that is not correct um, the person you see standing here at 46 was not the person who you, who you would have met a totally different person at 19. 
Um, I was lucky to be raised in a family where health was a priority. And for those of you who have kids, here's my number one recommendation. If you want your kids to make health a priority, don't tell them, model it for them. Stop trying to tell them, you've got to model it for them. And, you, and they, I mean, my daughter would stand up here and tell you that over and over again. The minute something comes out of my mouth, like, oh, you should do X, Y, and Z, she shuts down. But the minute, like we were at Whole Foods today and she went and reached for a drink and I said, oh, did you get your food? We were take, I was taking her up to her, um, her vaulting practice. I said, did you get your food? And she's like, yeah, I grabbed this, this drink. She didn't say anything. I looked down and it said raw caco on it, a raw chocolate. And if you, if you follow me on Instagram, I posted it on Instagram. And I was like, oh, that's a new drink. What, what's, what do you, why'd you pick that? And she turned the ingredients over, she's 15, turned the ingredients over and said, well, it had everything raw in it. It doesn't have any sugar and it has some good fat in it. So I figured that would be good to have before practice. And I was like, you know, now what you don't know is that a week ago when she was trying to sell C's candies to her friends and I said, hell no, we don't sell C's candy in our house. Um, we were fighting. Um, so your words don't mean anything, it's your actions. She's watched me do that a thousand times. I've sat and read the ingredients a thousand times. So. So I was lucky enough to, to be raised in a family where I was taught how to read a label from the day I could read. And I was modeled health um, all, I mean, from, from the beginning. And I, yes, I rebelled when I was in high school. I went completely the other way. When I was a you know, freshman in college, the very first semester, I was like, had one of those aha moments of like, oh, mom's not around. Like, wow, I can do whatever I want. And so I went completely the other way and um, I did the classic gain freshman, you know, 30, maybe 40 pounds I gained in my first semester of my freshman year. And I was a competitive athlete. And so I wandered into Weight Watchers and I decided that I was going to try Weight Watchers and see what that would do for me. And it worked. I went in, I dropped 30 pounds the second semester of my freshman year. Um, but how it worked was it was all chemical laden foods. So I was on all these low fat foods. I was on Diet Coke up the yin yang. I was you know, really focused on getting away from fat, counting calories, all of that. And in a short period of time, my health really started to, to break down. And um, I won't go into the details of my story. You can read part of it in the book. Um, but a series of injuries led me to chronic fatigue. And um, when I landed in a medical doctor's office after years of just, you know, lack of energy, um, not being able, I gained weight, lose weight, gain weight, lose weight, um, depression, uh, frustration, all, you know, and I know all of those things that I hear you guys tell me, like, you know, the emotional eating and it's hard to give up sugar. I was a huge sugar addict. Um, I had gut problems up the yin yang. And when I walked into a medical doctor's office, and he offered me a pill as the solution, I am so, so, so grateful that in that moment of weakness for me, I would have probably reached for anything, but I had a mom that said, no, we're not gonna do that. We're, there's gotta be a different way. And so what we ended up doing was going to five different doctors to repair my chronic fatigue. Um, and I basically what I'm teaching you guys in here is that what I learned from these five doctors. Um, they gave me, when I had chronic fatigue, they gave me a diet, they told me to drop out of school. I was 19 years old. They said, drop out, you're not, you can't, you're not gonna be able to graduate. I was a scholarship tennis athlete who um, they, I was holding, if you know anything about scholarship athletics, I was holding a spot. And when you hold a scholarship spot, if I get injured, I hold that spot for the rest of my years at, at Kansas, or I was at University of Kansas, which is great for me, but horrible for the coach. So the coach hated me. He would, he would, you know, we didn't have email back then, but anytime I'd show up, he was like, how are you doing? Are you better? Are you better? Are you better? Um, so it was a really stressful situation. Um, but what really, you know, turned me around was this, these principles that I applied and when I applied them, it was like within three weeks, like literally in three weeks, everything sh shifted around. It was that fast. So when I show you the many of the principles that I'm teaching you today, know that I have been there. 
I know what it's like. I know what it's like to have pain. I know what it's like to want a tub of ice cream at 11 o'clock at night because it fills up your emotions. Um, I know what it's like to wake up in the morning and not have any energy and, and, and by three o'clock you still don't have energy. Um, I've been in all those shoes, but what I made the decision that that was not acceptable and I was gonna do something different. So the first thing you've gotta look at wherever you sit, like I can give you the how today, but you gotta get it in here that wherever you are sitting right now is not okay. Because the brain likes to justify like, oh, it's not that bad. You know, I, I've been this weight forever. Um, I, my mom was like this, my sister's like this. All of the justifications that happen in your mind will impede you from being able to hit those goals. <laughs> so the first step and the first thing that I really had to do, I, I will try to uh, read the description for you guys back there. Um, is that you've got to have a vision for your health. You've got to say, like, look at where you're at right now and just think, where do you want to be 10 years from now? Now, anybody who has been around me long enough knows that when you come in my door, I always think that from the first moment that I meet you and I talk to you and I listen to your problems today, my brain is processing two things. I'm thinking, okay, how do we help this person today? And how do I get this person healthier so 10 years from now that they're better? So the problem that we have with health is nobody has a vision for it. Let's use the detox as an example. How many people in here are on the detox? Okay, so how many people wanna be on the detox? Okay, great, so I'm gonna, I will get to that symbol to that. So if you get on the detox and you say, oh, my vision is that I'm going to lose 20 pounds in uh, 15 days. Well, the first thing I would say to you is that's probably a little unrealistic. So we want to set a little more realistic goal. But why I call the whole book the reset factor is the whole idea is that I'm trying to reset your health. And then you got to take the baton and run with it and continue with the principles. It's not... Uh, it's not a complete makeover in the moment. It's a reset so that you can do your health differently. But if you, all you ha can see is past to that 15 day mark and you're not seeing what you want beyond that, then you're, you're gonna get stuck. If all you see is like, I want out of pain today, what I wanna know is what do you want 10 years from now, 20 years from now? Anybody who's ever had cancer will tell you they did not plan for it. Right, Patty? That's right. You don't plan for it, right, Nadia? It happens and you go, oh my God, how did, right, Brenda? How the hell did this happen? And it's because you had no initial vision. The great, one of the greatest gifts my mom gave me was that health was always a priority and we always had a vision of being healthy. Like, that's just what you did in my family. You were just always healthy. You always made health a priority, no matter how crazy busy you are. So. Chew on that for a little bit because some of you are gonna be like, yep, I know what mine is right away. And some of you are like, I have no idea what my vision is. So that's something you gotta work on and think about. I think it's great to just think 10 years from now, who do you wanna be 10 years from now? So um, the other question that I, that I have to like, ask you, and I, and I really want you to think about this as well, this is you know, just in your own self-examination, uh, is why should you care about your health? Um, I have plenty of people that come in here that um, are asymptomatic. We have little kids that are in here. Why would a little kid come into a chiropractic office and start getting chiropractic care at birth? Why would that happen? So the, the first thing you have to ask is like, okay, well, why should I care? And I think that there are really, if you could boil it down to two reasons, two, and I'm just gonna go right where I think everybody's motivation is. And the first reason is that when you have insanely good health, you have an insanely amazing life. Like, have you ever met somebody um, who has great health, is very bright, vibrant, very energetic, and they walk around bitching and moaning all the time? Usually don't, they don't like, and you know, I almost, we have, we actually at the reset factor, we have a, a 
a dream that we want to get like a big cruise where we bring a bunch of people on there, we rearrange how you eat, we show you new ways of thinking, and so that in a short period of time we can turn yourself around. But if you want, if you look at anybody, I'm going to continue to use my parents because they are, I, don't, I can't even remember how old you guys are, but they're in like their mid and uh, late 70s. And they outpace my husband and I. Like they are, we'll have to call and be like, hey, can we get on your social calendar because we'd like to go to the movies with you. And they're like, yeah, yeah, um, well, I, we might have something free two weeks from now. <laughs> like they're just completely booked. They, are, they, they get up at 7 in the morning and they go, 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 go to they're here tonight. Um, they, they, have, they have an insanely good life because they have insanely great health. So if nothing else, pay attention to your health and the food you eat because it gives you energy. How many people, out of, out of curiosity, how many people when you wake up in the morning, you have great energy and when you just stays that way all day long? Okay, so lift, no, don't be shy. Lift your hands, how many people? Okay, there are 50 people in this room. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six out of 50. That's crazy because Energy, it's not like one, oh gosh, one person has energy and the other person doesn't have energy. You create energy. The 20 year old version of me needed to nap. The 46 year old version of me needs like six hours of sleep. I'm like on the go all day. But that's not anything you know, miraculous in my genetics. That's because I've created a health path that has gotten me to that point. So if there's no other reason, if you're searching for a reason to be healthy, the greatest reason is when you have insane energy, you can just have an insane life. And that's, if everybody's walking around happy with their life, would they turn around and make other people unhappy? No, if everybody was happy, then we'd just like, we'd just be passing the joy around everywhere. So, okay, so that's my first reason to be healthy. My second reason, and I put this also on the page. I actually made this myself. That's not my baby, but um, I thought it was really cute. So how many people watch Shark Tank? Okay, so Kevin O'Leary on Shark Tank said that your health is one investment that is guaranteed to pay dividends. So I also think we have this completely backwards. We get up, we go to work. Why are we going to work? We're going to work to make a living so that we can have money to buy what? Stuff. And, and we like do that over and over and over and over again. So, so what is, you know, ask anybody who has cancer how, or got a diagnosis of cancer how valuable life is. You know, uh, Steve Jobs is an amazing example of this. He had a, an incredible amount of money, but he couldn't bring his health back. So I, I often use the story of Lanny because she, she taught me so much. She was so open about her journey with, with cancer. And she would over and over and over again say to me, you know what, Mindy, you're either, people just have to understand they're either going to pay now or they're going to pay later. There's no getting out of it. You either pay now or you pay later. So 65-year-olds, they're now saying that if you get to 65 and you're not on a medication, you're only 10% of the population make it to 65 not on a medication. That's crazy, I have a lot of thoughts about that. But why is that? You know, it's because nobody thinks about it until it, there's a crisis. So if you need another good reason, other than having amazing energy, a great reason is it's gonna save you a whole lot of money over a long period of time. Anybody who has cancer, you just sit down with them, they will tell you how darn expensive that is. It's crazy expensive. Whereas, you know, going and buying organic um, and uh, working out, uh, getting your chiropractic care, um, uh, resting, meditating, meditating doesn't, doesn't cost you anything. All those things, they just take your effort. And so you get to decide, do you want to pay an effort and a little bit of money, or do you want to just put it off and wait for the crisis and deal with it then? And I, I'd love to, like, we're... Uh, at uh, the Saturday, the 23rd, I'm doing a Create Your Best Life Ever event, and I am like hell-bent serious 
on getting people healthy this year. I don't want to just get you all spizzed up and excited. I want to sit down, create a plan, and know that you are working that plan so that anybody that comes in my sphere is not going to get cancer, is not going to be on medication. So on the 23rd, we're going to sit down. I'm going to have a panel of people showing you how to do health. My mom's going to talk, who is uh, an amazing woman. You, you have to hear what she has to say. She's incredible. Um, but we're going to roll up our sleeves and we're going to create a path for you. So that's on the 23rd. I'll tell you about that later. But at that event, you guys that have cancer um, or have had it, I really am hoping to bring you up and just, I, I just want people to hear the heartache of how, what a pain in the butt that is. So, and you know, when we look at statistics, there was something that came out this week and I just am blown away that it's just now coming out that they have done enough research that they are very clear if your diet is high in high fructose corn syrup, you have a 74% chance of getting breast cancer or uh, lung cancer if you have a diet high in high fructose corn syrup. And then they went on to say, well, actually, it's anything that has fructose in it. So these, I'm sorry to be off on a tangent, but it just, I want to motivate you so much that you never take your eye off your health because it's just too valuable. So what I have, have seen in my sphere and in doing this for 20 years and for studying the laws of the body and how the body heals, you really need four things. I'm, I'm shouting as loud as I can. <laughs> They're giving me this. Um, that there are four things that you've got to, four systems in your body that have to be in order for you to either reset your health or for you to stay healthy. The first system is your brain and your nervous system. Now, the only reason I pick that system first is because it controls everything in your body. If it didn't control everything, then I would be telling you a different system. I was uh, talking to somebody the other day about chiropractic and why I think chiropractic is so powerful. And I was saying, you know, the amazing thing about chiropractic is that the spine protects this incredible system, this nervous system. And the nervous system is the only way the brain can deliver information. So it's, it, I'm not preaching that because I'm a chiropractor. I preach that I, I, I am a chiropractor because of that. When I go and I look at the healing systems, there is no greater healing system than your brain and your nervous system. And your spine is the only thing protecting that. So start with that. That has to be your starting point, okay? Once you've gone from there, then you've gotta to go to your gut. So next to the nervous system, the gut controls the most amount, has the most far reaches to the rest of the body. And the microbiome, we are just now starting to understand. I guarantee you, if we transported us 10 years from now and put us all in this room right now, you guys are gonna hear, you would know so much about the microbiome. This is where medicine is going. And one of the reasons that they're going there is the use of antibiotics. So we have been using antibiotics, we have been fearful of germs forever and ever and ever. And all that's done is create these superbugs that just are getting greater and greater and greater. And we've put antibiotics in our uh, foods. We have antibiotics in the, you know, those anti-bacterial uh, hand soaps. We've got, we're so fearful of bacteria um, that they can't even find an antibiotic that works for some people. And it's so serious that the CDC has said they will stop making any more antibiotics. Done. Because it's, the problem is only getting worse. So if you've been on any round of antibiotics, if you've been on multiple rounds of antibiotics, you, there is not even a question in my mind, you've got some kind of damage in your bacterial system in your gut. So when I go to look at someone nutritionally, we've got to look at repairing the gut. And I'm gonna to explain to you tonight that we're even finding, this is like brand new in the last couple of months, that if your gut bacteria is off inside of you, it will turn on an obesity gene that has you holding on to weight that you will never, ever, ever be able to let go of until you repair that gut. That, and that's research, that is how important the gut is. 
So you've got to go to the gut second. Once you're done with the gut, you got to look at the liver because the liver is detoxifying like crazy. Um, I do a tremendous amount of research on toxins for you guys. I, I feel like my job is to gather all this information and make it simple and easy for you because you guys each have your own lives and, and to research to the magnitude that I do is almost would be near impossible and live your, your be an, an expert in the field that you're in. So, um, but right now, what we're seeing is toxins are just flooding our body. So this is why we do a detox. So anybody who wants to do the 15 day detox, if you're not sure if you should do it, my answer is everybody needs to do it. I do the 15 day detox twice a year to maintain my health. If you feel like your health is in a really bad place, then you've got to do that detox. I've had people do it for 90 days straight. Just keep doing it and keep doing it, and keep doing it until they can get those toxins out of them. So the liver is the, is the fourth one. And then the last one is hormones. To me, the two glands that are the most, the hormone glands are the most susceptible to the gut and the liver being off and, and the nervous system is your thyroid and your adrenals. What do your thyroid and adrenals give you? Energy. Energy. So when you're feeling depleted in energy, when you feel like I can't lose weight, what we're finding is that your thyroid and your adrenal glands, your adrenals sit right on top of your kidneys, can be malfunctioning. And so we've got to get those started back up again. And I'll walk you through how we do that. So this is why Sally can go on a, on a weight plan and she loses 30 pounds and then Mariana goes on that same weight plan and she loses nothing. How does that happen? I, this person over here goes wheat free and this one goes off to Weight Watchers and they come back and they compare notes and, and, and the Weight Watchers person says, oh, it worked amazing for me. And the wheat free person says, well, wheat free didn't work so good for me, so I'll come over here and do Weight Watchers and they try Weight Watchers, it doesn't work. So it's, you, it's because everybody's body has a different breakdown. It has a different point that it's not functioning right. Does that make sense? So when your friend says, I just went on X, Y, and Z diet, and I lost 20 pounds, and you go, woohoo, that's gonna be me. And you go and you get on it, and you're one week into it, and you're not losing weight. Stop beating yourself up. Because it's, we do not live in a one fits all diet kind of society. You have to figure out where the breakdown exists in your body and why your body's holding on to weight. So I started building this PowerPoint uh, this weekend, and I started off with eight things that I know you have to do to get your body to burn fat. And by this afternoon, because I'm, my wheels are always turning, I now have 10 things. So, but I tried to think of everything I could possibly tell you. What I want you to do is write these eight, 10 things down. Um, some of them you're gonna look at, and you're gonna be like, I'm on it, I got that. And some of you are going to go, hmm, I'm not really sure um, if I can do that or, or I'm not really ready to do that. So, but I want you to write it down because what happens is that you, as you start on the detox the, the, and you even move into that, into the 30 day habit reset, this is meant to be a 45 day change to your food. The way I set it up in the reset factors, it should be 45 days, 15 days is a detox and 30 days is changing your habits. And so when you get to a, a plateau and you're like, I'm not losing weight anymore. I think Dr. Mindy's just full of it. I don't know what the hell she's talking about. I want you to go back to that list and go, am I really doing all 10 of these things to their best ability that possible? Am I really doing that? Because there is a easy exit route when it comes to health changing habits. The brain does not like suffering. The brain likes us to feel comfortable. So when you step out of your comfort zone and you go and make changes in your food and you don't like them and you really want to be back over here having Oreos and hot cocoa watching movies at night, um, what I want you to see is that you, you can change and come over here but you've got to be doing all the steps. You have to do all the steps if you want to, if you want to get to that point. So the first step 
is what I just talked about, is, uh, is turning your nervous system on. You have to have your nervous system has to be at its maximum. And the most simple way you can do that is by making sure that, and I don't, uh, can I get a spine, Dr. Carroll? Yeah. Um, the, <clears throat> making sure that your curves are proper in your spine. I'm just gonna leave it very, very simple. You were born <coughs> to have curves in your spine. You were not born to have a straight spine. So the minute that you get off of these curves, what ends up happening is you weaken the nervous system. The place we're seeing this the most is with the thyroid gland. Because if you don't have a proper curve in your neck, the nerve that goes to the thyroid gland, gland so all of you guys have been doing this all day on your smartphone, I'm gonna have to rename that, it's not a smartphone. Um, what, ha what happens is you compress the nerve here, go into the thyroid and you shut off information to the thyroid. They, are, they have documented this, they're seeing it in whiplash patients because when you have a whiplash type situation, it creates a straightening of the neck and they saw that uh, a year to two years, I wrote about it in the book, uh, afterwards that, that they were seeing thyroid malfunction. So it's just simple. It's almost too simple that people go, what? It's just simple. So you want your liver to be next to your gallbladder. Those two work together. You want your heart and lungs to be next to each other. They're a duo. The brain and the nervous system and the spine, that, that, the central nervous system and the spine are a duo. So you gotta make sure that you have proper curves in your spine. I am, um, and I'm gonna just be extremely opinionated since this is my house. Um, I'm appalled that, that people take better care of their teeth and yet we've got people getting to 60, 70 years old that have never even seen what's going on with their spine. You at least need to see what's going on with it so that it can be, because maybe it'll be an explanation to why you're feeling so bad. So it's just simple, it'd be like, when I remodeled my kitchen, my husband and I spent a lot of time trying to assess what stove was gonna go in. And we got the top of the line best, we were so proud of it. And when we showed it to our contractor, he said, that's great, but guess what? You live in an old home and your electrical system is depleted, you need to improve your electrical system if you want this fancy stove to work. And so by the way, it's $13,000 to redo your whole electrical system. So I tell you the same thing for your body. You're gonna rush off and you're gonna eat organic, you're gonna go take supplements, but you're gonna put it all on a weakened nervous system and it's not gonna work as effectively. And that's, that, that's about as clear as I can, can make that statement. So turn your power on is my first thing that I want you to do. Okay, second thing, if you want to burn fat, you have to stop eating sugar. Okay, how many people hate this rule? <laughs> Come on, you're all a bunch of liars. <laughs> boo, just, let's just boo, that sucks. Come on, let's just get it out because you all put on happy faces for me, I know. But um, I know, it, sugar rocks, it tastes great. Come on, it's awesome. But guess what? Every time you eat it, it does two things. So I'm just going to give you two things. It stops your, your body from burning fat and it feeds cancer. Bottom line, those are two reasons that I do not put sugar in my body. Um, it's just not worth it. I don't, I don't wanna live in a body that is gaining weight and I don't wanna have cancer. So those are just two priorities for me. So this applies to every, every type of sugar. It, it, why during the 45 days I have you take grains out? It applies to grains. So anything that turns to sugar once it gets into your body. Grains, alcohol, pastas, rice, white potatoes, uh, ju uh, fruit juice, uh, tropical fruits, all of that, when it goes into your body, it turns, your bo it, it turns into sugar. So if you want to lose weight, you have to pull them all out, which is why in the 15-day detox, I have you only eat green apples and berries because they are the lowest in sugar. So you've got to pull those out. And if you're like one of those people that you're like, um, well, a little bit's not bad, right? 
Okay, so let's talk about a little bit about that. <laughs> because what's going to happen is that I get those people that come in, they're like, well, I'm not losing weight. At the, I'm not feeling any better. And then I find out that they had a little bit. And in their head, that wasn't a big deal. But in my head, it's a big deal. So when there are two ways that your body burns energy, it either burns it from sugar or it burns it from fat. When you take all the sugar out of your diet, what you do is you force your body has to burn energy from fat. It has no choice, which is why, and Fred didn't come tonight, did no, he? Okay. Didn't but with Mariana, she'll tell you how much weight have you total lost? Uh, 33. 33 pounds. So what happened in the time that you started in the springtime? April. Yeah. So when she first started, we noticed a little bit of a change. Mm -hmm. But the longer she stayed in that fat burning zone, the body had no choice but to just keep burning and keep burning and keep burning. And it then becomes like a coat that you take off, right? It's like all of a sudden, two weeks later, you're like, oh, I had a winter coat on and now it's like off. And you'll lose it in here and you lose it around here. That's when you know you're burning energy from fat, bottom line. So if you hate your midsection, how many people are like, ah, I just wanna get rid of that? then get off sugar, every single kind of sugar. And if you want an easier path, I don't have one for you. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, that, that's, you know, I heard a story the other day about uh, a Olympic athlete who got won the gold medal in wrestling in London. And they asked him what the key to his success was. And he said that he mapped out his training for four years and he included, for, so he knew what he was gonna do for four years. He knew what tournaments he was gonna go to, he knew what muscles he needed to strengthen, what skills he needed to have, and he even included in his training what obstacles he was gonna hit. Now, let's look at our lives. We get on a 15-day detox and we're like, yeah, I can get off sugar, that's not a problem. No problem at all, I totally can do that. And we get like three days into it, and our friend calls up and is like, hey, I'm gonna go to Pinkberry, you wanna come with me? Remember, remember how we love Pinkberry? We go, we're gonna to talk to each other, it's gonna be awesome. And you're like, oh my God, I love Pinkberry. Okay, well, it, you know, I've been really good. It's been three days and I've been really, really good. And, you know, Dr. Mindy's not around. So, I mean, she didn't say all the time. Did she say all the time? Okay, so just so you know, it's all the time when you're in the 15 day detox, all the time. Once you get to the 30 days, we can kind of work with it, but usually you'll stop craving it. That's, that's the, the truth. So um, how you know you're in the fat burning zone is really three things. Your energy should be through the roof. Did you notice that? Yes. Yeah, um, Gary, you told me you noticed your energy on the detox was really high. And you should feel like you get up in the morning, you have a ton of energy, and it continues throughout the day. So if you are a week into the detox and you do not feel that, come talk to me or find me on Facebook and message me. But that has to happen, otherwise you're not in your fat burning zone. So that would be the first thing. The second thing is your hunger should go completely away. How many people have noticed their hunger completely gone when they do the detox? Raise your hands. Yeah, I just want you guys to look around. Look at how many people notice who have done this before. Your hunger will go away, I promise you. Um, I started my detox on Tuesday, and because I like to, twice a year, I, I do a detox. I'm doing the one you all are doing. Um, and today, I had a ton of things to do, and I ended up having, I was kind of working on a smoothie most of the morning, just sort of sipping it here and there. I did not have my first meal until 4 o'clock. And I was not hungry. I was not hypoglycemic. I, I am not, I don't have the willpower of, you know, of somebody who's like superhuman. I just had stuff I was doing and I never got a hunger signal, signal, so I didn't know to eat. So that's how you know you're in a fat burning zone. So those two things, and then the third is if you're losing weight. Now, because I love fun new things, especially when they come to toys, those of you that are patients of mine, I have discovered this thing. It's called a ketonics. And you blow into it, and it goes into my computer, and it gives me a reading of if you're in a fat burning zone or not. Oh. Pretty awesome, huh? <laughs> so those of you who are on the detox, uh, uh, Carlos has one of these. He and I have been comparing notes. Um, 
We are going to be doing this on you periodically as you're in the office. We're going to do it on you. So when you say to me, no, I didn't really have any sugar, Dr. Mindy. <laughs> shows me you're in fat burning zone super cool thing really cool before this you the sticks yes the other way you can prick your your finger and get blood but this is way cooler this is brand new so anyway so stay tuned for that um so okay enough about sugar you get the picture on sugar it, it also goes for fruit juice so if you're making um smoothies and you're putting in apple juice and you're not, not sure why you're not getting any better, you're not losing weight, you're just putting too much, too much juice in. So I gave you on this sheet, I gave you what you can add in, and, and um, I didn't put what you can't, but I really tried to make it clear. If it's not on that list, don't add it in. Just, that's that simple. Okay, my third thing, this is the one where everybody loves me. You start to like me again. Um, <laughs> You have you in order to burn fat, you have to eat fat. So, and you guys have heard me before. You know, you I I, I, I apologize for the repetition, but I can't think of a better w example to use than when we went fat free as a country, and because of heart disease, did we get skinnier or did we get fatter? Yeah. We got fatter because what happened is we poured sugar into everything and we took all the fat out. So when you go to the grocery store and you see something that says low fat, put it away. Just put it back. Low fat means high chemicals and low fat typically doesn't do anything for you. There's no benefit in it. I mean, just look at how many low fat items we have. If low fat worked, everybody would be skinny, but they're not. So good fats are avocados. This is the things that I do on a daily basis. I have one to two avocados a day. Um, that is a phenomenal, phenomenal fat. I put it in my smoothies. It's great in smoothies. It doesn't taste like anything. It just kind of gives it a nice thick consistency. It doesn't it just takes on, it's like tofu. It takes on the taste of whatever you give it. So, so avocados, coconut oil. Coconut oil is fantastic. Take it, rub it on your skin, rub it in your hair. It, 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 it is amazing. And, you, and if you're feeling like as you're on the detox, your energy is sliding, then start adding one, two tablespoons of coconut oil into your smoothie. You've got to have high fat. So today I was making the almond bars up there. Who tried the almond bars? Was it good? Yeah. Okay. So I think I put that recipe in the book. Otherwise, it's in the Maximize Living Book. Um, but I, those almond bars, if you could munch on those all day and never get hungry and never, and, and never lose your energy. Um, but I was making them and they call for raw almond butter. So I took a scoop of raw almond butter. I was making it. When I got done, all the, the pans that I was using had almond butter. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, let me eat it. So I just started taking scoops of almond butter and eating it. And I swear to you, within like a half hour, my energy was high. I wasn't really hungry. And like... It, just take a darn spoon, stick it in the raw almond butter, and just start eating it. How many people have done that? Like, I give you full right to do that. Like, it doesn't matter if your kids are watching. It doesn't matter if it's adequately good. If you are starving, if you're about to go to somebody's house and you're like, oh, my favorite friend, she's going to have a glass of wine, and I'm on the detox, get the raw almond butter out and start eating that raw almond butter. Just make sure it's not roasted, right? So if Nadia posted something on Facebook today asking about um, nut butters, and you have to read the labels because they're tricky. And they will say, if they say dry roasted, you'll be eating them left and right, and you'll come into me and you'll go, I have gained 10 pounds. <laughs> right? <laughs> you're like, your rule's stupid! And I, and I guarantee you, you can have raw nut butter, you cannot roast it. Nut butter makes you gain weight. Raw nut butter makes you lose weight. So be sure you don't have, you gotta separate those out. Okay, so nuts, avocados, um, avocado oil, hold on one second, uh, coconut oil, um, olive oil is fine if you don't cook it. So if you cook it, it turns into a bad fat. Yeah. Um, really quick on the, on raw nuts, just the regular raw nuts. 
some recipes call for roasting, putting it in the oven, like with almond butter or what, whatever you're you're cooking, like uh -huh. making a bar or something. Does that end up making it? No, just as long as you don't add the oils. Okay. So if you just put okay. it a raw and you put it right on a pan, not not a problem. Okay. Yeah. So not not a problem. Perfect. Any difference between the coconut oil that's liquid and the coconut oil that is solid? solid. It's the same thing. At um, colder temperatures, the coconut oil becomes a solid. Okay, but you can buy liquid. Uh, you can buy it in the spray, but my understanding is that the, the that coconut oil as itself, when it gets cold, which is why a lot of people ask questions why, why they have chunks in their smoothie, um, is when it gets cold, it solidifies. So you'd have to show me what which ones you mean. Okay, great. What do you what oil do you cook with? I cook butter. Oh, okay, great. Butter is fantastic. Yay! Butter is awesome. In fact, if you put butter. in there so yeah because dairy's got a whole issue with it a ghee is great yeah as long as it's organic yeah ghee. ghee I've never liked ghee so I, I don't know a lot about it other than it's okay uh, palm oil's not good so sesame oil is good uh, sunflower safflower oil hemp is great hemp oil is great hemp uh, protein is awesome flax is great flax is good so, when, unfortunately, when you eat out, um, what happens is you're getting all the bad oils. So, in the 15-day detox, I really recommend you don't eat out because you just don't know how it's going to be cooked. And I'm trying to understand that in the 15-day detox, I'm trying to change your chemistry. That's what I'm trying to do. So, if you follow it, the chemist, the, the, your chemistry will shift. But if you go off just a tad, then all of a sudden that chemistry doesn't shift. So, um. Okay, next thing that you have to know about burning fat, and this is the one that will frustrate the heck out of you, is that toxins make you fat. Okay, this obesity gene. There is a gene that some of us have been born with that makes us obese and causes us to hold on to weight. And it is triggered by a change in the bacteria, and it is triggered by toxins what toxins in your food but they have done studies believe it or not one of the things that triggers toxins that they found was bpa where do we find bpa plastic so you're on weight watchers you're over here with your points you're cheering you and oprah are doing weight watchers together which is a whole other, I, I have a whole thing about oprah doing weight watchers right now i think she, Yes, she bought stock in it, and I, got, I love Oprah. I love everything Oprah does except this one thing. She has taken weight loss and pulled it back into the into the ice age. So, uh, but you're doing your points, you're doing all your stuff, but you're still toxifying. You're drinking your water out of plastic, and it's a toxin, and it'll cause you to hold on to that weight. So we have to look at things like that. What about those? I get, I buy filtered water, in, you know, where I go know the big. Yeah, like so it should be okay, but check to ask about the plastic. That's well, that's like the, how we yeah. know about the plastic. You, you can ask. There's a number on, on the bottom. Does anybody know what the number is? That says if it's BPA free, and I can't, I haven't memorized that. <laughs> I think it's one, two, three, but I don't remember which one is yeah. the bad one. Yeah, I don't remember either. So, so anyways, <laughs> okay, so toxins. So um, you've got to get nutrients to your liver. Um, which is why on the detox, now I know those of you that re have read the book, I outlined them all out, and then we got a ton of questions of like, well, how do I find N acetylcysteine, and how much um, uh, turmeric should I put in, and how much glutamine do I need, and what about glutathione? I've gotten so many questions with that. So if I, if I could have just put brands, like go get this, um, I would have, but I was trying to make it neutral so that people anywhere all over the place, all over the world could get whatever they wanted. So, all those things are at Whole Foods is proving them. Okay, so there's one option. Otherwise, the two things the two things that have all where I got those lists from are these two things right here. So 
I don't know this daily detox. Now turmeric, sure, you can find some other great turmeric sources. I do not know a better source than this daily detox. This stuff pulls toxins out of your body like nobody's business. So I'm trying a new one right now for myself just to make sure that I'm convinced this is the best one. Um, but I, hands down, if you want to detoxify, you've got to incorporate something like this daily detox. Um, the, the daily defense also has turmeric and it has another uh, product in it that will pull to toxins out as well. So, yeah, Sunny. The, the turmeric, the, the spice, the yellow. Yeah. Is that the same? Uh, not the same. You can't get enough of the concentration in it. You can't even cut up enough turmeric to get what you need in a supplement. What the supplement gives you. It wouldn't be enough. You really have, I mean, you really have to do a lot of spice. So we try to, we cut the turmeric up. We put the turmeric in shakes. We put it in our food. We try to do it as much as we can, but it's not, it's still not as good as the supplement. So when you get a high quality supplement, that's the benefit. So. Okay, so if you get stuck with your weight loss, if you get to the end of 15 days and you're like, ah, I'm not sure I lost all the weight I, want, I, I needed to or wanted to, it's probably your body's still toxic and you wanna continue on with some form of detoxing. Come talk to me and I'm happy to, to lead you to that next um, place. But know that if you're holding on to weight, it could be a toxicity issue. Okay, next step to becoming a fat burner is you've gotta repair your gut. Okay, I'm gonna give you the basic for how you repair your gut. And this is where you're gonna hate me again. Um, you gotta get off wheat, you gotta get off dairy, you gotta get off genetically modified foods. Guess what one of the number one ge most genetically modified food is? Corn, Corn but there's one more. Soy. Soy, you guys are good. <laughs> sugar. So when you're eating sugar, you're getting both. So um, the wheat we have right now, you can read about it in the book, is different. It's not the same. So if you're like, but I ate wheat years ago and it was fine. It's not fine anymore. It's not. So um, just stop trying to make it fine. Um, you got to get off of wheat. You got to get off dairy. If you're not sure, you don't believe me, get off of it for the detox and then add it back in and tell me how you feel. Because a lot, we usually we catch about 50% of the people that go, oh, I don't feel very good. Well, yeah, because you just didn't realize how much it was harming you. So dairy is the same way, wheat, dairy, um, and sugar. Those are the three things that will destroy your gut the quickest. Okay, ready for what else destroys your gut? Antibiotics, birth control. So if you have been on rounds of antibiotics and you've been on birth control for years, those two things are, have destroyed your gut and, and then genetically modified foods. So just by a show of hands, how many people have had one of those things in their lifetime? <laughs> so can you see why we have such a huge problem with, with gut health? And 80% of our immune system is in the gut. Can you see why cancer rates are going through the, the roof? It's like we've got to go find these breakdowns and fix them um, in order to be able to continue to thrive as a species, in my opinion. That we, the, what the world we're living in right now does not get, like most of America will never hear what you just heard right now, and that is so crucial to your overall health. So if you wanna repair your gut, you pull all those things out, and then you get on a probiotic. You have to be on a high quality, probiotic, 50 billion to 100 billion CFUs. Um, it, a probi don't you know, do a light probiotic unless you've done real extensive gut repair. But it needs to be a high dose and you need to change it every 90 days. You, you do a different probiotic because we have trillions of different species of uh, bacteria in our, in our gut and you gotta keep changing around, you gotta keep changing it. So mix it up so you're getting different strands. Um, you can add in sauerkraut. You can drink a lot of bone broth. You can uh, eat a lot of homemade yogurt, not the past. If you go to, I went to um, Whole Foods the other day and I looked in and it said, um, it, I looked at the, the yogurts and there is just like probiotic, probiotic, probiotic all over all the yogurts. And I will tell you, that if they took those yogurts and they measured the probiotic 
amount in them, how much do you think would be in them? None. None. Not one. Because when you pasteurize dairy, it kills everything. It kills the enzymes. It, it kills the calcium. It kills the probiotic. It is dead food. It is not helpful for you. So when you're giving your kid a glass of milk at dinner, thinking it's making them, growing them strong, it's not. And I'm sorry, this is one of those things we've been lied to on. It is destroying the gut. It destroys the gut. And I won't go into, go read, there's, there's two types of, of molecules, protein molecules in dairy. And um, we have, we're getting exposed to this A1 casein that is destroying our gut. So you can read about it in the book. But, um, but don't get fooled into thinking, oh, she said eat probiotics, and then you're down in yogurt. And again, you're like, wait a second, I'm not feeling better. Why am I not feeling better? Because you didn't get that right piece. Um, what about yogurts that say probiotics added after pasteurization? Oh, <coughs> possible. Okay, I, possible. Yeah. Yeah. Yogurt, that's why okay. I'm great. Yeah. Bring me one. Possible. Yeah. They could have it in it. Um, we have been doing sauerkraut. I hate sauerkraut, um, but I make myself eat it. And um, we've been doing the gut shot. Has anybody tried the gut shot? Yeah, okay, so gut shot is the juice from sauerkraut, and it's not bad. It's a little bit like it's drinking pickle juice. No, I should have brought some tonight. Gut shot. You can find it at Whole Foods, the one on the Alameda. You can um, also find it at the Campbell Farmer's Market. Yeah. It's like, it's, a, it's juice, and it's, it comes in three flavors, and it's the juice from sauerkraut. Yeah. Gotcha. So, and, you know, my husband and I have been experimenting with it. We, we, about a month and a half ago, we just started drinking it every day. He likes it a little bit better than I. I for me, it's a little bit like taking a shot. You know, he's just like, oh, wow, that was horrible. Right? <laughs> <laughs> if you're willing to take a shot of alcohol, why would you not take a shot of something great for yourself? So um, that's how I kind of looked at it. And we noticed both of us uh, at different times commented on how our appetite just really changed. Just not craving, I mean, we don't really crave a lot of sugar because we don't eat a lot of sugar, but um, just we, we, we didn't have much of an appetite. Like we would get to dinner and I would say, what are we gonna make for dinner? And he's like, I don't know, I'm not very hungry. This happened about two weeks ago. And I go, I know I'm not any hungry either. What have we done different? And the only thing we changed was that darn gut shot. So, but I know by studying the microbiome that when you get the right bacteria in there, your appetite goes down. So it's another tool, if for those of you that are like, I'm super hungry, I can't handle it, um, try the pickled juice gut shot. <laughs> um, okay, the other ways to repair your gut. Um, L-glutamine is fantastic. I use a product called GI Revive. I think this is one of the best products that I can find right now because it has a lot of herbs in it that repair the gut. So um, if you want to get any supplement or do any of the detox tonight, all of our supplements are um, on, uh, Jessica can tell you, but they're um, 10, 15% off, 10% off, 15% off. So um, this I recommend you put in all your smoothies. So I, I um, funny little thing I did the other day was that my daughter, my 15 year old daughter um, had, uh, was starting to get some skin issues and in my head, I was like, well, okay, well, that is the gut. So what is she eating when she's not in my house? What is she eating? And sure enough, this was right, right before finals. You know, her skin was really bad. And I, I'm like, oh, she's not eating right. So then she had her wisdom teeth pulled uh, last week, and I had to make her a bunch of smoothies. So I started putting probiotics in it. I was putting like the GI vibe. I was like sneaking it in there and giving it to her. Um, and I swear to you, in a week's time, Skin looks great. I looked at her this morning. I was like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> but that, this stuff's great. So sneak, sneak it in. Yeah, sneak it into your kid's food. It's, it's awesome. Uh, a tablespoon. Oh, no, tablespoon. So it's okay for kids. It's okay for kids. Yeah, GI Revive. So um, the other product, I don't have it here, but the other really awesome product I like is uh, Max GI. We have it up there. It's got herbs in it. Um, if, if I'd sent you home with one product and I said, tell me what you think that how you feel with your gut after a couple of weeks of taking this, and I just gave you the Max GI, you would notice a difference. It's, it's really profound. So, um, so there's that too. Okay, let's keep moving. Okay, what's the next thing that you have to do? 
You got to exercise. Okay, and you does I don't want you getting on a treadmill and walking on a treadmill for an hour and doing that over and over and over again and then being frustrated because you're not losing weight. So there is a very specific type of exercise. It doesn't take you very much time, but it means you have to push yourself to do it. So part of my commitment to you guys is to try to make this as easy and as applicable as possible. So I am gonna have Tiffany come up and talk to you about high intensity training. She is a trainer, personal trainer. How, long, how many years have you been doing it? 10, Ten years. Um, what sparked her, her coming in is she and I had a conversation a couple months ago where she said, I am done with hour long trainings because I don't think that it's as effective as the 20 minute hit trainings. And I was like, we have to tell people that. People have to know that. So she and I have been working on um, a program where twice a week on Thursday mornings in here, um, I don't know, that. did we set the time? We did. No, okay, so we'll get some ideas if you guys want to do this, um, that she will run a class in here. It'll be a drop-in class. I, we set the price and we were like, what did we say? It was cheap it was like 12 bucks 15 bucks something like that and yeah. you can come in and have a personal trainer run you through a program so if you're interested um hey dr carol can we get a list of people who <laughs> want to do the, the hit training thank you um and if you can't get here on tuesday th and thursday but you're still interested she and i are trying to work on a virtual way that you can just do it from home and you can do, get the same information. But come, come on up, I want her to talk about what she knows about HIIT training because okay. it, in my opinion, it's the only way to work out. Mm -hmm. Is that so. different than what you do on Saturday It's morning. very similar, oh. very similar, yeah. Hi, I'm Tiffany. Oh, oh that is, that's like, hi, Tiffany. Uh, HIIT training? Yeah. No. Yeah, okay, and we can talk more about that, okay. Oh, what a hard act to follow. <laughs> but like Mindy, Mindy's passionate about food, and I'm passionate about fitness. I am all, my friends run from me when they see me coming because I am always, what are you doing? I've got something better. I know I've got something better for you. And I've been a trainer for 10 years, and what I constantly hear, especially here in the Valley, number one thing, pe reason people don't exercise is they don't have the time. They just, period, don't have the time, so they don't do anything at all. And that just really bothered me. I just I just couldn't sit with that of like, yeah. you're not gonna exercise and there's all this information out there. High intensity interval training is nothing new. Pro athletes have been doing this for years. All this information is out there. When they need to get in shape and they have four weeks to do it, what are they doing? High intensity interval training. Because it's short, it's quick, what it does to your system, what it does to your metabolism, it basically just rocks your whole system. It, what it does is it puts your body into EPOC. EPOC is excessive post-exercise oxygen consumption. So when you're doing these exercises, it's pretty intense, but it's a short period of time, 20 minutes max, 15 minutes, 20 minutes max. Um, and because you're breathing so much and you're working so hard, this isn't just walking on the treadmill. You are really working. You are feeling like your heart's going to jump out of your throat. You do that for 15 minutes. What that does is it just creates your, your metabolism just goes into this overdrive. And so 24 to 48 hours after that workout, your body is still trying to recover. It's still trying to get to that pre exercise level. Isn't that amazing? That's where the fat burning is. That's where you're burning fat after your workout. Studies are showing now that um, two weeks of high intensity interval training is having the same effects as six to eight weeks of just regular strength training, just regular endurance training. So that's how effective this is. But like Mindy said, you can't cheat. It's hard. It's it's hard. It's a hard workout. You have to be like this. When you do one, you have to be like, <sighs> yeah. Like that is what that she's talking about. Not like, oh yeah. I think hurt. I feel it. You need to be like bent over, like I hate Tiffany, like moment. <laughs> <laughs> right? You can't, it's 
not you won't hate me in two weeks, but <laughs> the first few times. So not to scare any of you off. So I'm a very unique <laughs> trainer in that I want to work with everybody. And I, I've never been affiliated with a gym because I don't really believe in gyms. I feel like we're all different and what works for each one of us is very, very different. And a trainer needs to meet you and what you want to do because you're going to do what you want to do, right? You're not going to do what I want you to do. So I, my job, I feel, is to find what you guys enjoy doing, and I hone in on that. So high-intensity interval training, same thing. If I'm in a group with you guys, I'm going to find what you guys really like to do and what you really don't like to do, and I'm not going to make you do what you don't like to do. I'm not saying I'm not going to make you work hard. You're going to work really hard, but I'm not going to hammer in on the stuff you really don't like to do because then you get in your brain, I don't want to exercise. I don't want to do that because I don't like that move. <laughs> well, if I change that up and I do a move that you're like, okay, I'll do that. I know it's challenging because it's hard. If you keep going at that, it's not so hard anymore. Kind of like when you first start doing push-ups, they're hard. But when you keep doing them, they get easier and easier and easier. Person on this. <laughs> right. So that's that's why high intensity is such a um, it's big now because it's a short period of time. So trainers are kind of honing in on that. Okay, for 20 minutes. So I thought, okay, I never tell anybody to do something unless I try it myself. Is this really going to work? So about October, I did my first, I'm a cyclist, I did my first century. And I had to climb 10,000 feet. And that to me was daunting. I thought, I can ride the 100 miles, I'm cool with that. But that whole 10,000 feet and the 100 miles, I don't know about that. So I went down to Santa Barbara, and of course the century that I decided to do was the hardest in California, and that was my first one I was going to do. And I went down there and I rode the, the mountain that I had to climb and I barely made it and I realized I am not strong enough. There's no way I could add 100 miles to this. I know exactly what I need to do. I had three weeks to get myself to where I could do that ride and I did it through high intensity interval training. I came home and I started doing hill repeats and they were not fun and I hate it and I look at my husband and I go, I hate Mondays but I'm gonna get out there and I'm gonna do it. And I did that ride and it was just, it was such a great feeling because I was, felt so strong. And at the end of the 100 miles, I looked at my husband and I'm like, that wasn't so bad. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, you just rode 100 miles. But it was just that I worked so hard with that high intensity interval training. That's what did it. Besides just riding my bike all the time. Of course, I rode my bike all the time. But it was just that, that high intensity training made the world of difference. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, I used to have, before I did HIT training, I had a personal trainer, I had a gym membership, and then I learned about HIT training. There was actually a study that was done in Japan that showed if you did 30-second um, intervals of all full-out intensity, walking, sprinting, um, uh, biking, I think they did, but I think it was done run running, um, and then you did a 90-second break. You did 30 second on, 90 second break, which if you've ever come to any of my search classes, that's a long, no, you would never get a 90 second break. Uh, <laughs> just saying, don't expect that. But they did that for eight times and they found in a 20 minute period, you burned more calories, you raised your metabolism more than running for a whole hour. And the minute it's called, it's Tabatis was the guy that came out of, Tabata. yeah, Tabata came out of Japan. The minute I saw that study, I said, I canceled the membership, I canceled the personal trainer. Not that you should, I, I really recommend Tiffany here and I'll tell you There's why. Really good ones. <laughs> There's always good ones. This, mine didn't know about this. Um, and I got in better shape with less time. So um, Tiffany will stick around. What she and I are trying to do is really put together a program that's easy for you guys to follow. It doesn't cost a lot. So if you're interested in understanding this, you heard what she said, like a lots of different levels. Don't, if you're like, I've never worked out before, then she's a really good starting spot. Um, so just make sure we have a sign up at the front, just sign up and we will continue this conversation. So yeah, I don't want to scare you guys off. It is intense, but, but I always have variations for everybody. So everybody can do the workout. It's just you're, you're going to do it on your level and then somebody else is gonna do it on their level, but we're gonna do it all together. Also, there's this amazing app called Periscope.
So if you can't be well, here, we're right definitely going to periscope. Yeah. So you can do it wherever. And my workouts, I don't use a whole lot of, I really don't use any equipment. Your, your hiney is really all that you need. We're jumping up and down. We're moving up and down. Um, you don't need a lot of equipment, but I do have a few little things that um, you can get and you can do this at home. So Periscope is a great way for you guys to feel connected to the group, mm -hmm. but if you can't make the time, don't give up on that. You can do it at your own time because it also can be recorded. So that's yeah. super cool. If you don't know about Periscope, you get it on your phone. We're actually Periscoping right now. Um, I've got people all over the country. Actually, I don't know if um, Louisa's on there, but I've got someone in Denmark that's watching us right now. Um, so, and you can watch everything live. Super cool. Well, she said she was going to watch. I, I didn't, you could, if I was sitting right there, I could see who was coming on. But So you can periscope Tiffany's workouts, do it at home, and Tiffany's leading you through a workout. Awesome. So there is a way for those of us that are zero health, or zero, to sneak up on this. And I would slowly work you up. I would not hate you with a super intense workout because it just... My would cardiologist would not be happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't want to. He will that. be in. in <laughs> you know, he'll be like, what ha, What have you been doing? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. It's great. great. Okay. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. It. So, if you are stalled in your weight loss, um, you got to work out. It's, yeah. it, you really, it's, uh, I usually start people off with a change in nutrition first, and then once they do that, then they got to go work out, and that's the only way. So, connect with Tiffany, and she'll get you on the right path. Okay, I'm going to go through the last few things really quickly, but these are concepts I want you to think about. So one of them is called intermittent fasting. I wrote about it in the book, and the thing about intermittent fasting, what research, again, everything that I'm showing you is based off of science and multiple studies out there, but they're finding when you put yourself in a semi-starving uh, state that your body eats the bad things, like toxins, cancer cells, so this has become really popular for people who have cancer, um, and uh, toxins, cancer cells, and fat. Your body starts to eat it. Now, years ago, we heard like, oh my God, if you're starving, your body holds on to weight. If you're in a chronic starving state, intermittent fasting is a semi-starving state. So what the way I apply it, and this is actually the way that I eat right now, is you want to go a 15 hour period without food. So, and you want to do it every day if you can. It takes time to build your, your blood sugar up to that. Um, but the way I do it is I don't eat after eight o'clock at night. And then I will, I'll have my grass fed coffee in the morning with my grass fed butter. I have a cup of that in the morning. I have water, I have my detox water, I have spa water. And then I won't have my smoothie usually till about 11 or 12. I start to have my first new, uh, smoothie, um, but I won't have my first real hard food till about one o'clock. And then between like, let's say, so 15 hours would be four. That would be uh, somebody do it noon, right? So at noon or at one, you could have your first meal. And then you can go to town and eat whatever you want from one until eight. Eat whatever you want. Go to town. Eat not not the you. <laughs> <laughs> eat however much you want. Not the quality. Quality still matters, but you can portion size doesn't matter. So eat as much food as the approved food that you want. Um, I've done that. I've been doing this now for a couple of months, um, and. Uh, I'm 46, a couple of things I noticed in my early 40s were my hormones were really up and down. And I um, refused to believe that that was because I was you know, 46. I talked to a lot of people, some people's hormones were up, up and down. My mom will tell you, menopause was nothing. And so I knew it had to be something that I was doing lifestyle wise. Like, you know, I just was getting waves of, of real sadness, which is very unusual for me. Uh, a little bit of depression, it's just totally unusual for me. So I implemented intermittent fasting about two months ago. I do this six out of the seven days of the week, I intermittent fast, I will not have my first meal until seven, or till one, and I am happy to say knock on wood, all those symptoms are completely gone. So I, I'm just saying it for me, it's there as a tool, decide, if you can read about it in the book. So if you're stuck, this is a great tool. I have a question. Uh -huh. the 15 days you fast, you have 
two smoothies and one meal. Yes. You know, during the day. Yes. Can you mix it with intermittent fasting? Yes. Yeah, it's perfect. It fits perfect with intermittent fasting. So you have your smoothie at noon, you have your lunch at two, three, um, and at uh, at at uh, and then you eat your dinner at seven. And, and yeah, you just have to kind of squeeze it all in yeah. there. Yeah. It, it, you just have to squeeze it in. Yeah, because you know you recommend it. I was doing that sometimes just at night you are not so yeah. hungry. Yeah, you're not so hungry. Yeah. Because so that would be like a yeah. half of smoothie. Right. So it would look like this. It would be smoothie at noon, uh, uh, and lunch at like two or three, and then smoothie at night. That's how it would look. Okay. So and you you won't yeah. The other thing it does is you're not hungry when you intermittent yeah. fast either. Yeah. Alma did it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, in the morning, you sometimes have grass butter to eat with that. Yeah, uh, yeah. So there, um, I the, I'll add, let me answer okay. it at the end because okay. because okay. we'll end up down a rabbit hole on that one. So okay, okay, okay. okay. And I want to get you guys out in time and respect your and respect your time. Okay, la uh, last couple of things. Sleep. Okay, there are multiple multiple studies that show when you sleep, you burn fat. So if you're not sleeping, you're not burning fat. And unfortunately, you need between seven to nine hours of sleep. So I last year, my goal for the year was to get out into the world and bring the information that we do here out to the public. And so I went to over 50 corporations. And um, I every, to, every single one I went to, I asked them how many people get seven hours of sleep or more a night. And usually about one fourth of the room would raise their hand. We are a very sleep deprived world. So, um, so you, if you're not, if you're stuck, you're stalled, you got to go to bed. I mean, that's kind of cool, just sleep, right? So, but make sure you're making sleep a priority. Okay, next thing, late night eating. So when, I, I think the easiest way for me to explain this is that when you eat something, your body secretes insulin. And if you go to sleep, that insulin is going around and around in your bloodstream. Um, and if you're asleep, it will turn to fat. It's such an effective way to hold on to fat that they have sumo wrestlers eat a high carbohydrate meal and immediately take a nap afterwards. So if you are stuck losing weight, You've got to stop eating late at night and going straight to bed. I think two hours after your nighttime meal would be appropriate to go to bed after that. So, but late night eating will kill you. So. Does popcorn kill? <laughs> <laughs> Not in a 15 day. <laughs> We're back on the, on the popcorn thing. Okay, then there's another piece that will, will slow your fat burning down and those are the two organs, uh, endocrine organs, your thyroid and your adrenals. So with your thyroid, um, of course it controls metabolism. We all know that. But it, the problem isn't always with the thyroid. The thyroid is so susceptible to toxins. And our mineral, our, our soils are so depleted that most of us are running around iodine deficient. So getting good, an iodine source into your body is a really, really smart idea. Anybody, I don't, anybody watch, there was a program called The Truth About Cancer. Did you watch it? The Truth About I Cancer? Part of it, yeah. So that, they, thyroid. yeah, thyroid cancer is one of the quickest growing cancers because it's so susceptible to toxins and we're so depleted in iodine. So now, a lot of you are gonna sit here and go, oh, you, I mean, like this will be the one thing you hear is I need to go take an iodine supplement. You didn't hear, don't eat sugar. You didn't hear, you need to work your fanny off so you're not breathing. You didn't hear that you need to make sure your nervous system is strong. You hear, I am iodine deficient because it's the easiest thing to do. So you rush off and you take an iodine supplement and you're like, mom, it didn't really work. So it is a piece of the puzzle. So don't go rushing off trying to fix your thyroid by taking iodine, but if you're trying to put all these pieces back, it's a very smart thing to add in. So one of the things that we are doing in the Reset Factor, the Reset Factor is not just me, there is actually a team of people behind me. And there's a group of us that are trying to bring high quality products to the market. We're trying to get high quality information out. And so we are launching, some of you guys are already on this, we are launching a thyroid supplement and you can get it here tonight if you want. It's got iodine in it and it's got ashwagandha in it, which will help your metabolism. 
and it's got something called adaptogens in it. And adaptogens are nutrients that will help balance your cortisol levels and get your adrenals working right. I personally came up with the combination. I've been working with a company and a few other people to get the right scenario. So it is not for everybody. If you are at the very, very beginning of this journey, I'm going to ask you to not get it. It's, that's not, I, I am not a believer in one pill solves everything. But if you are in the middle of this journey and you would like to speed up your metabolism and get some nutrients to your thyroid, um, my team can tell you about it. We've got it up there and um, I'd love for you to take it and give me feedback. We've tested it on several people. I've tested it. I'm pretty excited about it. So that is an option for you. A thyroid obliterated? Yeah. yeah well, there's a lot of versions of thyroid stuff. Oh, yeah, but if somebody's had um, it removed, yeah, they already have their thyroid. Yeah. Does it work if you if if yeah, you had your thyroid? Medication for thyroid? Right. Right. Yeah. If your thyroid is out, I I don't know. I'd have to go look at the studies on iodine with a removed thyroid. So I don't know the answer to that. If your thyroid is still in, you still have thyroid tissue, then. Oh yeah, you got to get some iodine into that sucker and start to repair the, the thyroid, no doubt. So, okay, and then the adrenals are also affected in that. So a lot of you guys, we've been working on your adrenal fatigue. Okay, I'm gonna really zoom through this because then I'll stay afterwards and ask if you guys have questions and stuff. How do you make a good smoothie? Okay, how many people like the smooth smoothies they had tonight? Okay. So here's my strategy. I try to give you my ratios. So the first thing is that you need a high quality protein powder. Okay, this is honest to God my favorite protein powder. I like the taste of it. I like how I feel on it. Some people don't like it. Protein powder is personal, but I don't want you having toxic protein powder. So um, there are uh, other great brands. I am a huge fan of Garden of Life. So Garden, this one, uh, we talked to Garden of Life extensively about their fit protein. Um, it's pretty good stuff from what I can tell. And Garden of Life in general is a phenomenal company. So um, I found this at Costco. So um, this is Vega protein powder. Um, I put it in my smoothie this morning and I thought the taste was okay. It's cheap, but the taste was just okay. So, but it, you might like it. So I would say next time you're Costco, get a bottle and try it. Any difference between whey protein and yes. vegetable protein? Yes, yes. So there are three proteins I put it on there. There is grass-fed whey protein. I wrote about it in the book. Um, grass-fed whey protein is phenomenal for getting your body to secrete glutathione. Anybody know what glutathione does? Did anybody read the reset factors? Glutathione's <laughs> uh, like flypaper to your toxins, sticky flypaper. It hooks onto toxins and it gets it out of you. So uh, broccoli, cabbage, garlic, onions, those all have a lot of glutathione in it. So this is phenomenal. It has a lot of, it will get your body secreting glutathione. So that's one of the reasons why I like it. The um, pea protein is another one, P-E-A. That's in these protein powders, PEA, like, like a pea. Um, it will do nothing for your glutathione levels, but it will, it's a good protein and it'll keep your blood sugar even, um, as will hemp. So those are my three. I either do uh, grass-fed whey from a high quality source, pea protein, or hemp. Those are my three. So um, I'm, uh, if you walk into Costco and you're like, well, I'm gonna get the grass-fed whey one that's only $10 and it's Kirkland brand. I am not a fan of Kirkland brand. I do not think that those are high quality products and most of the grass-fed whey that, they're, that they've got there is just, it's toxic. So I am a big fan of the Maximize Living one. That's the only grass-fed whey one that I use. Vega, grass-fed whey and Garden of Life. I found another one recently that I like called Nutiva. This is just hemp protein. So I've been mixing this in too, which is great. So you need a good protein powder. You need a good fat. The two fats I put in my um, smoothies are avocados and coconut oil. If you're hungry on the detox, add more fat in. Just keep adding more. The, you need, um, uh, oh, I also put the GI Revive in. You guys saw that. And I put something called Max Greens in. 
Here's the thing about Max Greens. Max Greens is high density chlorella that gets right into your liver and it supports your liver. It's awesome. It is a really key product for detoxifying. Um, I cannot find another source to tell you. It's just, it's like daily detox. Like daily detox and Max Greens, I can't find another good, I can't tell you the Garden of Life version of those. That I really like those too. So, um, so those, my staff can talk to you about that. All of our smoothie bundles, all of our detox is on sale. You can get that tonight if you're start, especially if you're starting the detox tomorrow. Um, okay, liquid. Here's where your people get messed up. You do not use fruit juice. I found this almond milk at Whole Foods. Um, it doesn't have any chemicals in it. Some of the almond milk has real funky stuff in it. So I looked at it <laughs> and it's almond milk, spring water, and organic almonds and sea salt. Um, we have any, who's on our Facebook page, our Resetter Facebook page? Okay, if you're not, we have a group on Facebook of people all resetting their health, and on there is a professional chef that is making recipes and posting them. So um, if you're not on there, come talk to me. We'll make sure you get on there. And she showed us on the Resetter page, she showed us how to make our own almond milk, which was really cool and an interesting idea. So you can do that as well. Dr. Carol found this at Whole Foods. It's called Organic Coconut Milk Classic. Um, this would also be another great option. Um, I looked at the coconut milks at Whole Foods and many of them have crap in them. And so I just decided I was gonna put some for tonight and I'm like, no, I can't do it. The carrageen in it and, and <clears throat> some other gargum, some other weird stuff. So you gotta be careful just because it's a health food doesn't mean, or it's in, in Whole Foods doesn't mean it's healthy. What about coconut water? I have too much sugar. It's oh. too high in sugar. Yeah. Where, where, did, you get where did you find that? This is at Whole Foods. Really? Yeah. Yep. I looked for that and I, not where the box stuff it's was. It's yeah. in the Asian no. food no. section. Oh! <laughs> it's in the Asian food section. Oh. I was going to say, I looked all over for that and I couldn't find it, but I didn't think to look in the Asian food section. There we go. <laughs> so I wrote on the, on the list there. Do you have the list? So I wrote out on here, um, on the back. Okay, so here you just take one from each each square. Just take one item from each square and put it in your smoothie. That's how easy that, that can be. If you don't want fruits and vegetables, then just pick fruits or vegetables. But one item from each square, make sure it has plenty of good fat, make sure you're not putting high juices and high sugared fruits in it. That's how you make a smoothie. Pretty, pretty, I gave you some good recipes. It's pretty straightforward. Um, okay, supplements. I got a lot of questions about do I need to take the supplements? I'm gonna give you my really quick answer on supplements. There are therapeutic supplements and there are maintenance supplements. When you're trying to do something like detoxify, the therapeutic supplements are really helpful. They will speed up your results. Now, if you, if you look at supplements and you're like, well, I can't afford to do the supplements, don't let that be a barrier. Start with the other, you know, start the detox, get a good protein powder, start there. But know that the supplements, as you can add them in, probiotics would be the first thing I started, I would start with. Um, as you add that stuff in, you're gonna get a better and better result. Now, let's say fast forward, we're at the end of the 45 days and you're like, I feel great, my health is reset. I only think there are three supplements you take at that point. You take vitamin D. I personally love Maximize Living's vitamin D with probiotics because you get a two for one in there. Um, you take uh, omega-3s because I think you need nourishment to your brain and, and we're really depleted and you take a multi. And that's it. So when you go and you look at supplements and you, you see the cost of them or you see like I can't take all of them, they should be for a short period to get you reset, and then you should have some maintenance ones. You don't continue on the probiotics? Uh, you continue on the probiotics. <laughs> it, <got it>. yeah. <laughs> if you have a serious issue, you will need to continue on the probiotics. Yeah. yeah. I, and not that I'm pointing you out, Rosine, but, uh, but sometimes more people need more probiotics than others. So, Okay, so that's my answer about supplements. Um, okay, last couple things. There are your short-term goals for health and there are your long-term go goals for health. So I hope you have short-term goals like, hey, I want the detox to do X, Y, and Z, fantastic. But if you don't have a long-term goal, then you absolutely need to be at the event we're doing on the 23rd. 
So it's at the church. We can only hold 200 people. We are doing it workshop style, meaning I am going to give you a, like a plan where, you're, where I show you this is where we map out what you wanted, what your health is going to look like this year. This is what it's going to look like 10 years from now. And here are the steps you're going to, you're going to take to get there. Um, personally, I am the type of person that I am tired of scooping out great, inspiring information only to have you take it, go out into the world and not be able to implement it. So on the 23rd, I am going to sit with each one of you, make sure that everybody is implementing it and you walk out of there with a very clear plan. My other new fascination right now is neuroscience and what holds us back from good habits. So, or from, from, from getting to those good habits. So I am going to walk you through what is mentally blocking you. So if you have any interest in being healthy, you need to be at that event. Um, we gave away the first 50. They were given, they're gone. If you got one, you were lucky. Um, we are doing tonight, if you uh, buy one, you get one free and the ticket's only $10. So it's three hours of your time and $10. We're asking that you bring an accountability partner with you because doing health on your own sucks and you don't succeed. So we want at least one person in your life that knows what you're doing and so brings, that's why we're giving you a ticket. So if you're interested, let my team know up there and they will get you that. Okay, I wanna talk, tell you a real quick story about Sandra. She's not here tonight. But a year ago, we did a detox, and Sandra, the interesting thing about Sandra is that she lost her dad to a heart attack, and her mom got breast cancer, um, but uh, successfully fought it with chemo and radiation. Um, and so Sandra said, I don't want that to be me. And she, last year at this time, she started with a 15-day detox. That was her starting point of eating healthy. And she did it, and she succeeded. She lost like eight, 10 pounds. Um, and then she grabbed a bunch of people around her, her friends and family. I have never even seen these people. She just always would leave the product and tell me, oh, I've got my friends doing it now. Um, and she must have done the detox at least five times last year. She would do it and then she would follow the habit reset and then she would slip. She was in yesterday, I was talking to her and she's like, yeah, and then I would slip and then I'd go back on the detox. She did that for a year and in a year's time, this is not perfection health, this was Detox, three-day habit, grab my friends, a couple weeks I didn't do so well, hopped back on. She did that for a whole year. She's down 45 pounds. 45, she's beautiful. You should see her, she's gloves, she looks great. So that, she will be at the 23rd. I want her to tell her story because I think when you see people doing it in action, I want you to see that you can do it for yourself too. But that's how powerful the program can be if you follow it. And she didn't even follow it to a T. Okay, last two things. You gotta look at who's cheering you on. If you do not have a cheerleader, I am the world's best cheerleader. Um, I am happy to be your cheerleader. When, <laughs> when I, this is my passion, this is my purpose, this is my obsession. Um, if you're stuck with your health, then you can get a time with me, we can sit down together, I will look at all your health, um, where your health's been, I'll look at all the vitamins, the medication, I will, you bring me the good, the bad, and the ugly, and we will put you on a new path. In order for me to create that path for you, if you wanna get set up a time does, uh, this week or next, it's only $75, like I lowered it way down, I'm trying to remove barriers. So just tell my staff and they will set you up for something. I think, that it's really interesting that we hire personal trainers, um, that we hire golf coaches. Um, you know, if you look at all the top CEOs, they have business coaches. Why don't we have a health coach? So health is hard to do on your own. So I, that is what I'm really good at. So if you want a time with me, please let my staff know and I will look at your health and I will obsess on your health and I will make sure that we get you where you need to be. So there's that as an option. And I'm gonna end with this. Um, I don't understand why we think we stay in our own lane with health. Like, oh, I'm doing health and I'm doing something really cool, but I don't need to talk to you about it. I'm just gonna sort of stay in my own lane. I think that we're in one of the biggest health crises that our, our country has ever seen and people haven't woken up to it. So I have made my mission this year um, to start a health movement. 
Many of you are seeing me on social media. Um, if you've ever done social media to the degree that I've been doing it over the last week, it's a lot of work. Um, but I'm doing it because I'm trying to get people out there talking about this stuff. How many people learned something tonight? Okay. That, and so all I ask is that you pay it forward. So something you learn tonight, you go and you tell one person tomorrow, one person. And if that one person has an aha moment, it's like, oh, microbiome, you mean there's a, an obesity gene? And I could, the bacteria in my gut could be turning that on? I never heard of that. And they have an aha moment and they go out and buy a probiotic and that probiotic starts to make some change for them that, and, and they're happy, and then they go spark somebody else to be happy. We can literally change the way people are doing health, but we can't keep our mouth closed. We can't. So um, at the event on the 23rd, bring everybody you possibly can um, so that we can get this information out. Don't keep it to yourself. Don't be embarrassed by it. You know, I, I, some people say, oh, I don't want to talk to my relatives because they have such strong opinions about their health path. I don't care. You gotta keep talking about it so that we can stop the cancer rates, we can stop the people from dying, we can stop the people from over-medicating themselves because that's never, ever, ever, ever going to be a solution. So um, I will stick around for questions. Uh, get your product if you wanna start the detox. Get a time with me and reach out. If you leave and you get lost in your, you're like, you go home, I, I always say this one thing. If you go home tonight and, and over the next 24 hours you talk to one person and they say, that's crazy, I never heard of that before, an obesity gene. By the way, Deepak Chopra believes there's an obesity gene too, so you tell them that. Uh, and they go, where did you hear that from? And, and you're like, well, I went to this workshop that a chiropractor gave, and then they say, a chiropractor? What does a chiropractor know about an obesity gene? Um, and then all of a sudden, your enthusiasm, your focus gets shut down. So don't let that happen. Keep learning, keep engaged. If you don't believe in the path, let me believe in it for you, but if the minute you check out, you're done. Then, then nobody can help you. So stay engaged. That's my one advice. So, with that, Thank I'll head out. Yeah. Okay, coffee. Sorry, I didn't mean to. to okay. No, I just knew we were going to get it.